Do you know which is the most burdensome psychiatric disorder? Major depressive disorder or unipolar depression, one of the mood disorders is the most burdensome psychiatric disorder. The lifetime prevalence of major depressive disorder is about 12 to 17 percent. The ratio of men to women suffering this disorder is 1 is to 2 and the most common age group is middle age. So a depressed middle age female is most vulnerable. Major depressive disorder doesn't vary with the socioeconomic status. Depression has the highest suicide cases, about 15%. Maximum dallies are lost to depression amongst psychiatric disorders. DALI stands for Disability Adjusted Life Years. What are the symptoms of unipolar depression? One is there is sleep disturbances. The most common is insomnia, but hypersomnia could also be present. Early morning insomnia is the commoner variety. There is a decreased onset of REM sleep, that is the rapid eye movement stage of the sleep. There is decreased latency, that is, for example, 30 minutes instead of 90 minutes on going to sleep. That means REM stage of sleep is going to intrude faster. The second symptom of major unipolar depression is loss of interest, that is anhedonia. Anhedonia is loss of interest in activities which used to give the person pleasure before. The third symptom is guilt for trivial things. Fourth is a loss, lack of energy, decreased concentration. When it comes to appetite, just like sleep, it is most commonly reduced, but sometimes increase in appetite is also seen. The sixth symptom of Depression is psychomotor retardation or agitation. The last one is obvious. It is sadness of mood. These core symptoms must last at least two weeks for the diagnostic, diagnostic criteria. Now there are additional symptoms or specifiers along with these core symptoms. Depression could be with psychotic symptoms that is delusion and hallucination. If these psychotic symptoms are present, a diagnosis of severe depression, <laughs> severe depression with psychotic symptoms is made. Now, with atypical symptoms, hypersomnia, increase in appetite, and weight gain might be there, which are atypical to depression. Now, there is a specific term called Leiden paralysis. What does this mean? It the patient of depression feels there is a subjective awareness of limbs. The, this is what the patient feels, subjective awareness of limbs. The third additional symptom or specifier is with catatonic symptoms. And the last one is with melancholic features. This is seen typically in elders. There is severe anhedonia, guilt, weight loss, sleep disturbance, agitation, and even delusion of nihilism might be seen. Now, depression with melancholic features has an increased suicide risk. What is the etiology of depression? One theory is neurochemical transmission, that there is a decrease in serotonin, decrease in norepinephrine, and even a decrease in dopamine. This is the monoamine theory of depression. The second theory is that some of them, about 50% have cortisol hypersecretion. And how is this tested? This is called dexamethasone suppression test or DST, wherein a patient takes wherein a patient takes dexamethasone. Now the next morning a normal person will have a decreased ACTH secretion that which leads to decreased cortisol. 
but in a patient of depression the when a patient takes dexamethasone there won't be a decrease in cortisol the next morning that is there is excessive secretion of cortisol which is the stress hormone the final theory is the psychological theories of depression cognitive theory by aaron beck there are three negative thoughts or the beck's cognitive triad which consists of negative view of the self that is ideas of worthlessness negative view of the environment that is ideas of helplessness and the negative view of the future that is ideas of hopelessness what is the treatment for depression pharmacotherapy the most common first line group of drugs is the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors the ssris electroconvulsive electroconvulsive therapy ect or shock wave therapy is also effective for depression what are the indications for an ect a depression with suicide risk depression with stupor or catatonia ect can also be tried as second line for depression with psychotic symptoms what is the first line for anti depression with psychotic symptoms antidepressants and antipsychotics if these drugs are resistant or contraindicated then ect might be tried for depression with psychotic symptoms now the third modality of treatment for depression is repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation then the fourth is vagal nerve stimulation especially for refractory cases the fifth one is phototherapy for depression which which shows a seasonal pattern which is also known as light therapy the sixth one is deep brain stimulation this is most commonly used in parkinsonism but can be tried or used in refractory depression this is to be noted that this is not fda approved what types of psychotherapy could be tried for depression one is cbt cognitive behavioral therapy developed on basis of cognitive model of depression cbt challenges the three negative thoughts that is the beck's cognitive triad and replace them with healthier thoughts the second psychotherapy is the interpersonal therapy where relationship has led the patient to depression the third one is behavioral therapy family therapy group therapy psychoanalytically oriented therapy could be tried for case to case variations now what is dysthymia dysthymia is a sub syndromal depressive symptoms continued for greater than 2 years here the patient's socio economic functioning is intact the patient has occasional sleep loss feels life is not enjoyable and remains sad most of the time what is chronic depression syndromal symptoms of depression greater than 2 years is chronic depression in dsm 5 both dysthymia and chronic depression are clubbed and called persistent depressive disorders what is recurrent depressive disorder more than one depressive episode in a lifetime is called recurrent depressive disorder that means if a patient has two or greater than two episodes of depression that is recurrent depressive disorder now this is interesting what is anaclytic depression anaclytic depression is the depression in the infant when he grows up when in the childhood he was separated from the primary caregiver which is the mother who is the mother most of the times thank you for listening subscribe for more audio lessons